Hello everyone and welcome to CWL Builds. I'm Caleb and today we're going to be making this custom dice box with a built-in dice tray. Now, some might consider this cheating, but I'll be using a pre-made box from the craft store. Now, yes, this is a cheaper wood and a cheaper build, but it saves a lot of time in the end and a lot of money. Now, the first thing I do is take off these hinges and that locking mechanism on the front. Now this is so I can work on the boxes easier and I can sand easier. Then when everything's done, I can put it right back in place. Using a sanding sponge, I sand the entire box and especially focus on the corners because when you buy these, they're pretty sharp. I'll be using this honey colored wood stain and uh, usually I go for a darker tone like in my last dice box video but I decided I would try a lighter tone just to have a good contrast against the metal. After giving the stain time to dry I can measure the inside diameter of the box, then I can transfer that to this piece of felt that I have. I got this felt from the same craft store that I got the box from, and most will carry it. You can pick any color, I chose red, and you're going to draw it out, cut it out, and then I'm using spray adhesive to spray one side, then spray the inside of the box, and attach it. I'll be using this one and a half by one eighth inch flat bar aluminum and I'm using this just because I have it and it's a nice fit but if you don't want to work with aluminum you can use wood or MDF instead. I attach this with spray adhesive as well. Once you have it lined up where you want it, you can glue it in place. I'll be using this piece of EVA floor mat to add a second layer to where the dice sit so that they're a little higher than the dice tray. So as you can see, I cover it with the same felt I used before, again using spray adhesive, and we can glue it in that slot. To make the metal straps that go around the box, I'll be using this 5mm EVA foam, and I cut it into inch and a half thick strips. Then using my rotary tool, I bevel the edges to give it a more natural look. I also have to cut out this little notch to make room for the hinges, and I can glue everything in place using super glue. I'll be using Yaya Han's EVA foam dowels that I got from Joann's to make the faux rivets that would hold the metal straps in place on a real 
metal-wrapped chest. To prepare for painting, I mask off all the wood and leave the EVA foam exposed. I'll be using Mod Podge Matte to seal the EVA foam. Now normally I would use Plasti Dip, but I'm out of Plasti Dip right now, and in order to be a good citizen and social distance myself, I'm going to be using stuff I already have in the shop. So after a while, I realized that I was gluing my seams together here and that I wouldn't be able to get any paint in there. So I had to cut along the seam of the box and you know, cut through the tape and then add another layer of masking on the back so that it would cover up the felt. So for paint, I'll be using this metallic finish from Rust-Oleum. It's a nice dark metallic color. And after that dries, I'll be using black wash for weathering, which is a mix of black acrylic paint and either water or isopropyl alcohol. You let that dry for a few seconds, then taking a dry paper towel, I dab most of it off, leaving some behind to act as weathering. Now I want my straps to look kind of rusty, so I'm going to be using this burnt sienna and burnt umber acrylic paint. I mix it up to a nice color, then using a chip brush, I add a little bit onto the straps, then using my fingertip, I lightly rub over where I put the paint and this just gets rid of any of the hard lines that the paintbrush made and makes it look a little more natural. I'm adding a layer of matte clear coat just for some extra protection and then you can remove your masking. I'm also going to be adding some weathering to the hinges, so I'm running it against some 220 sandpaper and then I give it a dunk in black wash. I ran into a bit of a problem when trying to put the hinges back on, and that is that these straps, when you open them, they hit and lift the top of the box up, which of course doesn't happen when the hinges are attached, so the box just doesn't open. So what I'm gonna have to do is scrape some of the EVA foam away, just like this, and do it on both sides, and that will give it enough room for the box to open completely. I'll be making my own decorative latch to replace the latch that came with the box in the first place, and I'm using 5mm EVA foam for that. And to keep the box closed, I'll be using these strong neodymium magnets. And make sure you mark your polarity before gluing these in place so that you don't have two opposing magnets. I'll be using this burr to create a small hole for the magnet to sit into. And as you can see here, it keeps it closed pretty well. And the last step is to glue on our decorative latch, and I think we are ready.
thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, if you liked it, consider dropping a like, consider subscribing. If you like this video, I'm sure you'll like other videos on my channel. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, put them down in the comment section. I'll try to get back to you guys. Again, thanks for watching, and if you build one of these yourself, I'd love to see a picture. Send it over to my Instagram at CWLBuilds, same as my channel name. I love seeing pictures from you guys about things you've built that are inspired by things I've made or I've showed you how to make, so definitely send me a picture if you make one. Again, thanks for all the support, thanks for 3,000 subscribers, and as always, I'll see you in the next video.